This video goes with section 86 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intenso course and covers the very useful concept of the accusative subject of the infinitive. You'll find it in Hansen and Quinn on pages 268 and 269. So, you have had infinitives for a long time now, and as you know, infinitives don't have person and number, and you've used them quite often. Sometimes they complete the meaning of another word or another verb. Othello, graphene, biblia, for instance, means I wish to write books. And there, um, there is no subject per se of the infinitive graphene. It's completing the idea of what I wish or what I want to do. Infinitives also complete the meaning of some adjectives, and so we've used it in situations like this. Hohomeros hikanos graphen biblia. Homer is capable, hikanos, to write books, or we might say in better English, capable of writing books. And in that instance, too, it's just the idea of writing that the infinitive is getting across, and we're not focused on who's doing it. It doesn't have person and number, and so it's just the idea of writing because infinitives are verbal nouns. But sometimes you need to indicate the subject, who's doing the action in that verbal noun, and when you need to indicate a subject, you're going to use the accusative. We've seen this a little bit before. We just didn't think about that's, that that's what we were doing. So, kalelwe homeron graphene biblia means she commands Homer to write the books. And when we learned kalewo, we thought of Homer as the direct object of kalewo, and it is. Homer is the person that she's commanding, so he is the direct object, and that's a good reason for him to be in the accusative. But if you think about it, it also makes him the person who's doing the action of the infinitive. And he's already sitting there in the accusative, and he becomes the subject, you could say, of the infinitive. He's the one doing the writing. She commands Homer to write the books. And in fact, you can take the same words and turn it into an articular infinitive, tolgraphene biblia, which means to write books, or perhaps writing books. And remember that we give uh, an infinitive, an article, in order to be able to use that verbal noun in the different cases. We call that an articular infinitive. And so in this instance, I'm going to let that stay nominative and make a nominal sentence and say, to write books is good, or writing books is good, agathon. But I can get more specific and say, to homeron graphene biblia, agathon. And then I am saying, for Homer to write books is good. I've added Homer in the accusative, and that has made him the subject of that infinitive graphene. Now, we don't have as neat a way to express that in English as Greek does, and so to keep the infinitive, I used the English expression for Homer to write books is good, and that's one of the ways that we get that idea across of which person is doing that infinitive. Hanson and Quinn will tell you, and I could also have put here, Homer's writing books is good, but since that involves a possessive and a genitive and a gerund, that seemed like too many removes from the infinitive for me to put that example here, but that would be good English as well. So the real thing you need to remember is that infinitives don't have person and number, but if you need to indicate a subject, you're going to use the accusative. That's the basic idea here. And here's another big example with another articular infinitive in the dative. To, tus politas, tois theois zoa thuein, hypoles sozontai. By the citizens sacrificing animals to the gods, the cities are saved. So, tothuane is our articular infinitive, and tus politas are the subjects of thuane. They're the ones doing the sacrificing. 
Now here you can see that sometimes you're going to have to make a logical or context decision about which accusative is the subject of an infinitive because of course infinitives can have accusative direct objects too. And here we have both tus politas and zoa, but it would be unusual for animals to be sacrificing the citizens to the gods. So context I think can tell you almost every time which accusative to choose as the subject of your infinitive. So I've shown you some examples um, where this is going to be useful in articular infinitives, but we're learning it now because we're about to need it in certain kinds of result clauses because some result clauses have as their verb an infinitive and you'll need subjects to go with those. And later on, when we learn indirect statement, which is reported speech, there will be a way to express indirect statement in Greek that has an infinitive as the verb, and so we'll need to be able to express the subject, and the accusative will do that for us. But really, the sole message of this video for you is that if you need to indicate a subject for an infinitive, since it doesn't have person and number, you're going to use the accusative. That's it. That's what you need to know for section 86.